So now we actually want to start building our flow node. What we'll do here is we'll first create a new file and make sure that we add it to the CMake list file. Uh, this ensures that when we regenerate the solution, Visual Studio is notified of the new file and tries to compile it. Let's do that quickly. We'll just create a new file called flowmynode.cpp. Uh, we can drag it in there just to see what's going on. Uh, it's completely empty, nothing of interest inside it. And then open the CMake list file. And what we'll do is just scroll down to the flow, existing flow nodes group. So this is just a source group that indicates that we want a flow nodes filter right here. and then containing these three files in this file structure. So we start at game DLL, then go into flow nodes, find the flow base node, and flow game entity node. And then it pops out right here after we generate the solution. What we'll do then is we'll simply add a new instance if we don't make any mistakes here. Flow nodes slash flow my node dot cpp. Save and just modify this file to add a pragma here once. And what does the pragma do exactly? Pragma once just makes sure that the compiler only goes through this file once. Since this is a CPP file, we actually don't need to do this. <laughs> just playing tricks on you. <laughs> no, just playing tricks on myself. So let's include the standard header here. And uh, let's create a new class. We won't actually do anything with this class just yet. It will compile. Notice that everything is fine. And CMake noticed that we changed CMake lists right here, which then on build triggers a regeneration of the solution. So just reload that and notice that, hey, our flow node is here and actually compiled it. There wasn't anything of interest here. But we'll just show you exactly what we need to do as I have an example on the side of my screen here. So we need to include flow base, base note dot h. This is a helper header, which indicates a bunch of things that allow us to easily create flow notes. Not much to it. For example, if we open it up quickly, we'll see the automatic registration of flow notes going on here. I think it's good in point to actually uh, show the different types of nodes. It shows at the top where mm -hmm. you have singleton. Very good point. So there are three different types of nodes based on how they need to be cloned. For example, the first type being a singleton is, as the description here says, uh, a node that's only created once. That essentially means that when we have this class implemented here, an, an instance will be created and no more meaning that any logic happening will go through the same instance over and over. We can't store any states at all. Then instance would mean that for every new flow node created in Sandbox, we would create a new instance of C my flow node. And cloned means that it's up to the uh, node itself by calling the clone function. And let's see if we can find the clone function right down here. So here's one use case of it. So for singletons, we just return the same instance when we clone. Uh, if you want some different functionality, that's totally fine and up to you. What we can do then is start writing the node. So as you see here, the flow base node singleton implementation is fairly straightforward. Uh, we want to actually go for that. We just do public C flow base node, the singleton. So before we go on anything uh, further, mm -hmm. what does final mean exactly? Is final means that nothing else will be able to inherit from this class. Okay. Uh, that's very useful for the compiler at some points in order to optimize some virtual functions, but it doesn't really matter that much. It's more of a helper to indicate, okay, this is it. Nothing else will implement this uh, further or extend it. Yes. And then what we need to do is implement the bunch of pure virtual functions. For example, we need to implement the get configuration function. 
which we can actually see up here if we just search. Uh, hold on. It's actually in iFlow node, which we find right here. If we scroll a bit quickly. Here we go. So in the flow system, we have all the definitions for pure virtuals, like get configuration. This is called when we're first registering the flow node and allows us to define which input ports do we want, what description should we have for our flow node, and so on. Uh, so let's just start with adding a dummy here. We're not going to do anything with it just yet, but just leave it here as is. Uh, then we'll also implement the process event function. This is called when various events occur. For example, if an input port is triggered on the flow node. So this is actually where the event and in, in really, really where it happens. Exactly, yes. Then we also need to do get memory usage. This is not particularly useful for us right now, but this is actually called fairly often uh, when debugging memory or profiling memory specifically in order to find out, okay, which flow nodes are allocating what memory and what's going on, pretty much. Now, is this used solely in flow graph nodes, or is this actually handled inside of entities? If you were to create an entity, would you use the same Git memory usage through CrySizer? Yep. Git memory usage is available in quite a few CryEngine functions. Uh, what you do is that you simply use the interface in order to tell it, this is all the memory I'm using, report that to the system, and then the system itself can possibly tell you later on, okay, we have this many C my flow node instances and they're all allocating 10 gigs of memory. Why is it allocating this much? And that's something you can use to debug the memory usage. Gotcha. That's nothing we'll be using initially though. Uh, another specialization which you won't notice by looking at the iFlow node interface is that we actually need to have a constructor taking a S activation info pointer. And I believe this is actually enough to compile. It won't do anything. But that's a base flow node. What we also need to do at the bottom is register it. This macro pretty much just adds uh, the flow node to a linked list. And then at startup, I believe in Game Factory, we actually register these flow nodes. Let's see. Here. Exactly. Like Game Factory of yeah. Game SDK is similar where it's registering inside of it. Exactly. But I, this automatically sniffs out the nodes, which is a little different from the different entities that you would actually state directly in Game Factory itself. Yep. So let's decide on a name for our flow. Let's just do my name. Node so, log. So the first part is the category, which appears when you right click in the flow graph editor. So it's more like a folder. Yeah, pretty much a folder directory of some sorts. And then the name of the node, which is log, and simply then referring to See my flow node, you can compile again. And we noticed, oh, hey, something is wrong because the constructor wasn't public. So if we fix that, then we compile again. Uh, I'm actually not sure what would happen if you started Sandbox right now. Would it actually show up? It should show up, but it is a good question considering that we have no outputs. There's no logic in this node. But let's give it a shot just to be. Curious. It's a nice little test case to see yeah. if the, the node actually shows up. Mm -hmm. And then we can build from there. Oh, yeah. We can actually skip loading level, just open flow graph. Uh, and see here. Oh, my node. My node, there we go. There it is. Got it right here. So if we try creating a test graph, there we go. An entirely empty and slightly useless node. But it is a base framework that oh, yeah. we can build upon. So, for example, we could have a look at another node just to see what would happen. Comparison is here. We have the title, which we defined, and then a bunch of ports that we would add later. So with that flow node that you just brought up, the other mm -hmm. one, mm -hmm. not ours, it's the same exact structure. Does that actually vary from flow, flow node to flow node, or would you always have constructor, git config, process event, and then always. your memory? Yeah, always. Always. There's no getting around that. So pretty much once you've learned this, you know the starting point. Pretty much, yeah. Okay. 